Good evening, and welcome back to New Ostrog, the Canadian Orthodox Monastery of All Saints of North America. As several of you have noted, there was um, an interruption in the last broadcast, and part of the uh, broadcast did not appear. So I'm going to finish that this evening. I wondered how many of you probably noticed that my desk is a little cluttered and messy. It always reminds me of visiting uh, Vladiko Danilo in Belgrade. When you would go into his place, he would always have to move a stack of books or papers off a chair so you could sit down. And uh, my first teacher, Father John Romanides, was very similar. When you would visit him, I visited him in Athens a number of times, and you, you couldn't even get a drink of water from the tap because even his kitchen sink was filled with papers and books, all the cupboards, every table, everything, completely covered with, with books and papers and things. So I suppose it's, it's in my uh, formation or my training by some of my teachers to have a cluttered desk. Anyway, uh, where we had the break or where we paused in the last broadcast, I was just saying how we face problems with uh, translations, of course. Every translation is an interpretation, because when you translate from another language, you might have two or three possible meanings to a word. You have to choose one, and therefore you interpret. That's unavoidable. What sometimes a little more avoidable, people claim to be making new translations of divine services or of the Psalter. But really, it's nothing of the kind. These people often don't speak another language from which they could translate. What they're actually doing is trying to rewrite translations that already exist. And one of the worst type of this rewrite is among those people who absolutely cannot tolerate beauty and poetry of language. So they want to reduce everything to uh, as common a language as possible. And with things like the Psalter and the Divine Services, forgetting that, first of all, they're intended to be sung. They're intended to be sung as poetry, as poetic expressions. They have meter, and the meter has to be preserved. Also, the expressions have to be preserved. Now, what happens is that when there is metaphor, Metaphor is usually lovely, and so many people in North America cannot tolerate loveliness in language or beauty in language. They somehow think it's obsolete because it's beautiful. Uh, so they try to transfer that metaphor into a concrete piece of prose. And the minute you do that, you create an idolatry in place of a revelation. Because the revelation or the teaching is so often expressed in metaphor. And by not preserving that metaphor, by thinking they can make it more modern or more common in the language, by transferring that metaphor into a concrete piece of prose, they destroy the meaning of what's being conveyed. And that is a problem which we do face. And really, it is because of the intolerance for beauty and poetry in language that this takes place. So one has to be rather careful uh, in approaching that or in, in looking at the divine services in these renovationist rewrites because so much of the meaning goes along with the metaphor and of course there is a lot of poetic license in the divine services. So we cannot render those as something concrete because they're really, as I say, meant to be sung, meant to be chanted. The psalms are meant to be chanted. Most of them were liturgical. There were uh, liturgical psalms in the Old Testament liturgy. And so the meter has to be preserved so they can still be chanted properly. And uh, sort of the context also. So this is a, a problem that we face with Holy Scripture and with um, the Divine Services and the Psalter in particular. I remember uh, reading 
a billboard once as I went past some Protestant church in which they said, you know, the scripture tells us all have fa fallen short of the glory of God. Well, they couldn't comprehend that and not paying enough attention to Apostle Peter, they have translated it as we've all fallen short of the glorious ideal that God has for us. But that isn't what's said. We literally fall short of the glory of God because God intends for us to participate in his glory, to become partakers of the divine glory. And consequently, what is actually being said is that we fall short of the glory of God. And this is uh, precisely what's meant by the verse. So very often by trying to improve upon something or make it more comprehensible, people simply translate according to their own passions or their own impression or their own idea and rewrite the scripture or the divine services in that way. So it's something we need to be cautious of and careful about when we approach the divine services and the, the Holy Scripture. Now we're talking about the reading of the Holy Scripture and we caution people about the book of Revelation. We've seen some of the ludicrous and often just plain silly interpretations of the divine scripture. Uh, there was a whole series of books written based theoretically on the book of Revelation about the end time some years ago. And now of course we also have this rapture left behind theory that's going around. And I noticed that it got to the point where there was a left behind video game created and in it uh, Christians uh, are, are shown thrusting their Bible at Muslims and in the end you get to kill off the people who don't accept your version of God's Word. Uh, a very vile game that was generated by a rather vile teaching, the teaching of the rapture. And uh, so again as we mentioned in the teaching of the rapture, uh, Mr. Darby had a dream. He wanted the dream to be divine revelation so he went rummaging through the scripture trying to find a verse that would substantiate his dream and found some that he could interpret that way and re wrote them, so to speak, reinterpreted them in a way that the church had never interpreted them or understood them, and created an absolutely new doctrine, a new revelation. Well, we find this uh, from, from time to time, and we want to be careful that we avoid falling for these kind of teachings and these kind of twisting of the scripture. And again, it takes us back to the necessity of the holy tradition in reading scripture and understanding scripture particularly when we read it at home for spiritual growth and development we should be cautious about interpretations and I'm going to talk in the next broadcast a little bit about the Bible studies that some people are I should say subjected to or and others which people are blessed with and I think it's important to understand how an Orthodox Christian Bible study should be conducted as opposed to a sectarian or Protestant style of Bible study. Uh, God bless you, and uh, I, I'm going to make another broadcast almost immediately, so there should be two on your um, available on your computer by morning. So thank you very much, and I ask for your continued prayers.